What's going on you guys, A21 Mayo here, and today I'm going to show you guys how to play Maestro in Rainbow Six Siege. And without any more talking, let's jump into the video. So the first few things I want to go over is Maestro's best loadout, so I'm talking attachments, as well as weapon or secondary utility, what maps Maestro is really, really strong on, and what maps he isn't so strong on, also some really, really strong and influential Maestro cam spots, and just a whole other list of things that can make you a better player on Maestro. And I'm also going to talk about how to use the Bailiff properly, because I see a lot of people struggle with it, and I see a lot of mistakes when people use it. I have a decent amount of time played on Maestro, I would say upwards of 100 hours, maybe even 200 hours played on Maestro himself. So I have a lot of experience, a lot of time with him. To start us off, let's talk about Maestro's loadout. So let's talk about the Alda first. So everyone knows the Alda, the, the infamous LMG on defense. 81 bullets, high fire rate, really good damage as well. Just an overall beast of a weapon. It's kind of like a chainsaw, so to speak. Like the, the thing just, it doesn't stop pressuring the attackers. So as you can see right now, what I personally like to run on Maestro is the hollow. And then I like to slap the muzzle brake on. I've tested Maestro's recoil with every single attachment with the, in the game. Flash Hider is pretty decent, but in my opinion, I think muzzle brake just beats both flash hider and compensator just a little bit more so if you guys are unsure what barrel to actually run on maestro try them out but personally i recommend the muzzle brake on maestro and is all done and then obviously you can only have one grip attachment which is the vertical grip and then as for the aa12 or the acs12 uh, i don't use this gun i don't think i've ever used it and besides like a few times like two or three times so you know it's kind of a troll <laughs> to be honest with you if you bring this gun over the alda but if you do want to bring it, uh, you know, you can attach the 1.5, whatever it is. But uh, I heavily, heavily, heavily suggest you bring the Alda just because on paper and just in game, it is so much better. It's literally top five best guns in the game, in my opinion. And then let's talk about the Bailiff. So a lot of people might bring the Keratos, which is fine. But the Bailiff is similar to how the Alda is to the AA-12. So the Bailiff, you know, it allows you to make rotates, lines of sight, really set up the bomb site in a way to the point where you can use your maestro cams and open angles as effective as you can. And one little thing with the Bailiff, and we'll get into this later, uh, attach the laser to it. Trust me, guys, if you guys struggle using the Bailiff or, or whatever it is, attach the laser to it. And then I'll go over a little bit of a tutorial, just some pointers, some some tips to use the, the Bailiff as efficient as you can. Because I know a lot of people struggle with making rotates or just overall doing any sort of soft destruction towards the bomb site. And a lot of people struggle with that. So I'll go into that a little bit later on, but slap the muzzle on the Bailiff and then play around with it. But, uh, you know, the Bailiff is far more superior than the Keratos. Yes, the Keratos is a longer range weapon, but again, you have the Aldo with 81 bullets. You shouldn't really need the Keratos as a backup secondary. You know, if you're relying on a secondary to get you a kill or finish off someone, um, you know, that's kind of more on you than it is, uh, you know, relying on that secondary because, you know, 81 bullets again... Uh, high like a, just an insane gun if you have to rely on a secondary still then you got some things to work on just as a player in terms of decision making or positioning but you know use what you want for the secondary i'm not gonna say you know use one over the other because it is all down to personal preference but i heavily suggest the bailiff over the keratos itself um so th this is just my loadout and my preferred recommendation for people who do want to start playing maestro or haven't really played him a lot uh the the alda with the hollow muzzle break and then the bailiff with the laser really really good combination here now his secondary utility has the choice between a set of barbed wire or a set of impact grenades now this is really going to change depending on the map and what you're trying to accomplish so let's say for an example you have like a jaeger and a malusi there's really not that much of a need for barbed wire yes you still can bring it but you know the, the bomb sites might be a little cramped in terms of a malusi or barbed wire or whatever it is so see what else your team is bringing and then kind of adjust around that and also if you guys are comfortable with impact tricking or know how to impact trick on a specific map you always have that option with the impact grenades on maestro but you know between these two options it's really going to change between map to map or round to round just mid mid game adjustments or just you know changing your secondary utility to something different for a specific map if you guys you know want to do something that you know works with an impact grenade or works with a piece of set of barbed wire i'm not going to tell you to do otherwise because if it works then that's great go for it okay so now that we've talked about my show's loud out just you know some recommendations and stuff like that let's actually jump into the game talk about some good positioning for maestro uh good evil eye spots and just overall advice or tips on how to play maestro 
Before we carry on with the video, I want to mention a few things. So firstly, don't forget that you can pick up the DG weapon skin for the LED5 for Thatcher and Sledge by going to the shop tab, scrolling down to the bottom, and clicking the eSports button. I also want to mention that you guys can subscribe to the DG channel for as little as 99 cents a month for a tier membership. You guys have access to exclusive emotes, exclusive sub badges, as well as two high quality Rainbow Six Siege backgrounds each month. Now with all of that being said, let's carry on with the video. All right, so now that we're actually in game, let's talk about a great position for Maestro to play. I tried to pick a map where Maestro is heavily played on, and I think Consulate Basement, you know, you can see a lot of Maestro being brought here. So let's go over his Maestro Camp positionings, why I place them here, and just overall some tips for Maestro Camp placements and what you should be looking out for, and what you should be doing, and what you should not be doing. So as you can see, the first Maestro Camp here is placed side white van. This is a very, very default place to kind of place a maestro cam now why is the the maestro cam placed here well it's important to realize that you're getting as much information as you can out of a maestro cam at all times so you know whether that be holding an angle like this or being able to see an angle like this or just an overall broader eye towards something so that way you can maximize your information always do that with any intel operator in the game so why is this maestro cam always placed here and why is it so important and influential well, you know, one thing that it allows you to do is see outside of the breach once it is open. So that way, you know, if I go over here and uh, shoot the, the little bottom part of the garage open, you can kind of get a better idea of what I mean with see outside the breach. So as you can see, you know, I can zap anyone's feet outside of the uh, the truck there. And also another reason why this Maestro Cam is super powerful is because drones. So if you guys are not shooting drones when you're playing Maestro, you need to start doing this. Maestro is not there to deny plant. He can when he needs to, but that should not be his number one purpose. His, his main purpose should be to destroy any utility that can be shot, but it cannot be shot from an actual operator. So therefore you use the Maestro cam as sort of, sort of like that bridge between an operator and getting rid of any attacker utility that you can shoot with the bullet. So, you know, whether that be destroying drones, uh, nomad charges, ace charges, Habana charges, gridlocks anything anything that you can shoot with the bullet make sure you're shooting this with the maestro cam again maestro cams are their primary purpose should not be for plant there are better operators and better utility out there for that job maestro is just an overall universal operator so that way you can give accurate and consistent information for you and your team and also maestro is a bulletproof utility operator and if you guys are unaware you know we've been in kind of this 20 second meta in the competitive side of the game and bulletproof utility and just bringing a lot of it is very very impactful because it eats up a lot of explosive utility and then couple that with also well, my and jaeger it makes it, the attacker's jobs a living hell so to speak so maestro does a really good job at that of annoying the attackers and trying to get rid of utility and forcing them to use an explosive that they do want to get rid of the maestro cam so this spot here is a very default location that you can see on Maestro Cam. Again, as I said, you can shoot anyone's feet behind the truck outside. Also shoot any drones, you know, any uh, gridlocks that are being tossed on the garage floor. You know, you can zap those wherever they may be. Now, the second one that I want to talk about is very important because at, when you're playing Maestro, you need to keep in mind of holding a crossfire, so to speak, or maximizing your information gathering, as I just said earlier. So, you know, a lot of the time you might see a Maestro Camp side white van, which by the way, this little area here is called side white van um, for anyone who is curious about that call out. And then you also might see another one uh, at the front end of the black car and garage. Now, the reason I disagree with the one front black car there is because you're, you already have the information, at least very similar information from the side white Maestro Camp, right? So it's important to maximize util your, your utility so that way they're not both looking in the same area and gathering information on the same spots and on the same operators, right? So instead of putting both Maestro Cams looking in the same direction on the same angle, whatever it is, you know, maximize that utility. Always keep this in mind across any Intel operator in the game. Maximize your information with their utility, rather, is what I should say. So the reason this Maestro Cam is super influential is because not only can it see all the way back white van, yellow pillar, pipes, and also yellow sandwich here, but also, if you need to, you can also get backside information. So as you can see, I can see the security hallway. And also, if you open up the wall here a little bit, um, you can also see the cafe door. So if I don't suck with the bailiff and actually, you know, I'm able to open the wall there, you know, I can see the cafe door walk in. So if I go over here, you're going to be able to see my little white glow, so to speak, from 
from the uh, the maestro cam and let me just touch this up a little bit more you know you're maximizing this information so let's say the attackers uh they're not attacking garage they don't have a hard breach or they can't get the wall open whatever it is well they now have to resort to either pushing backsite or all walking down yellow stairs right so most of the time they're going to resort to backsite that's just usually how it goes in this game so if you guys have ever played consulate uh quite a bit you know, a backside take isn't an uncommon thing to do. So, you know, now instead of having the maestro cam look here and being able to see anyone trying to plant front white or, you know, run through the uh, breach into garage and, and fight anyone back white or yellow pillar or pipes or, you know, if an attacker tries to walk down yellow, you can very easily just, you know, let's just say you're on your, you're in an area, you're holding an angle on the yellow stairs walk down, you get on your cam, they're coming backside, okay, bam, get on the cam instead of looking there and now, and now looks here. And it's also important to kind of realize, uh, you know, what angles your maestro cam can see. So instead of having my maestro cam looking like this, you know, there's no point in having it having it look at, you know, 60% of the wall here and its field of view. So instead of having the angle look like this, yes, it's still holding the same angle or looking at the same spots. Instead, put it just on the edge of a doorway or a window. So that way, again, you're maximizing your, your information. So I can still see all of the hallway, I can see the cafe door, and I can still also see uh, a little bit of pipes, uh, back white van, and also yellow pillar cafe rotate into cafe. So you're getting all of this all of this information just by slightly changing your maestro cam angle from looking here to looking here, right? So it's important to realize little stuff like this because it really, really could be the difference in terms of util uh, in terms of information that's gathered for your team to win or lose a round, right? Because if it's looking here, you know, now I can't see the cafe door. Let's say, you know, an attacker comes in through the cafe door, swings the guy back white, uh, back white van or, you know, kills someone pipes or whatever it is, right? Uh, I'm just throwing out situations so that way I can give an example to why this is so important to do when you're playing Maestro. But yeah, the biggest takeaway from this little section of the video should be to try to maximize your information per piece of utility, especially on Maestro. So, uh, you know, make sure that you're putting your Maestro cams in the right spots where not only they can serve a great piece of information throughout the round, but also have an impact on how the attackers have to use their utility, make a decision on whether they want to get rid of it or not. And just overall have as much information, as much benefit for you and your team from a single Maestro cam or multiple Maestro cams. And also, try not to stack your maestro cams in areas or rooms of a map or bomb site. So that way, again, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but maximize the the information per piece of utility. It's always a good rule of thumb to follow for any piece of utility in this game. Trying to be as utility efficient as possible is very, very important. Okay, and so now that we're on a different bomb site, still on consulate, but different bomb site, let's talk about some different ways and important things to pick up on when you are playing maestro. So if you're not going to have your maestro cam out in the open, it's always important to keep in mind that if you want to, you know, have your maestro cam stay alive a little bit longer during the round, you can place in areas like this where the attackers aren't going to be have be able to have a direct line of sight on it. So if I try to get a, a pixel angle on this, right, like I'm not going to be able to really see this unless I drive a drone in and uh, spot it. And also for the balcony as well, the, the, these players on the balcony are not going to be able to see this maestro cam. So as you can see, I can only really see, a, you know, part of the visa, visa door there. So, you know, this maestro cam is really strong because let's say the attackers are trying to smoke off, you know, the, uh, the doorway or smoke off connector here, or just planning to smoke in general on the bomb chassis or default plant here on uh, table default, you know, you're still going to be able to see through the smoke because as most people know, maestro is able to see through smoke canisters. So... If they do end up smoking the area off, you can very very easily ping the enemy, you know, have someone go below, floor bang them or nitro sell them. Very, very important thing to keep in mind here. And also this maestro cam here. So, you know, these two maestro cams are not only giving direct information from the bomb sites, but more specifically, this maestro cam here is giving information on CO default plant, uh, couches default plant, and also connector rotate, whichever side it will be on, baguette and long desk. So a lot of the times, if the attackers are going to take admin side control, they're also going to try to walk up long desk or have some sort of presence here. And you can get a lot of information. So if I go all the way back here, you know, you can very easily see that I can see half of my body still, right? So I can see half of my body from a maestro cam that you can barely see as an attacker. So if you're standing here as an attacker, you pretty much have to go prone or you have to, um, you know, 
drone that out or, or know that it's there, so to speak, right? So even if I'm standing, peeking, strafing, ba strafing back and forth between these two angles, it's going to make it very, very hard for me to see that. Like, I can only see the very, very bottom section of the, uh, the Maestro Cam there. So unless I drone that out or I get a direct call out, if I'm not actively looking for that, it's going to make it really difficult for me to get rid of. So whoever whoever's playing, you know, long desk uh, area like this, like Soda, if it's an Ash or Zofia, I mean, Zofia is going to have a, a hell of a time trying to get rid of that Maestro Cam because Zofia impacts Arc. Um, so, you know, you have to kind of compensate for the arc that the impact is going to go through. But nonetheless, if it's an ash charge, you know, you can even see it despawning there. And I have my LOD quality at high, which is basically the distance at which, which things render at. So it's a really, really strong maestro cam, right? Is what I'm trying to get across. But yeah, like I'm getting full information here, um, on long desk, uh, CEO plant, a little bit of baguette connector cross all of this off of one maestro cam. This is what I mean by maximizing your utility. And if you guys don't know how to get up here and kind of slap this Maestro Cam Dow down, um, never break this vase because it allows you to vault up on this desk here. So make sure nobody breaks your, the, this vase on this desk on the uh, defensive side, your team, um, because it makes it much harder to get that vault prompt. But uh, nonetheless, you know, that's how you get that Maestro Cam up there. It's super strong, super influential uh, Maestro Cam. And again, look at how much information I'm getting off of this one Maestro Cam. And yes, you know, you might say that, oh, what if, what if an attacker's over here? Well... If they're over here, you know, they can only go one of two ways, right? They can either, if the yellow wall's open, you know, they can walk back into yellow or, uh, you know, they're going to be stuck in the cubby over there because they can't obviously leave unless they drop the hatch. But, um, you know, if they go over there, if you don't see them cross back, they're either still there or left, right? That's what I'm trying to, uh, that's what I'm trying to say. All right, so now that I've kind of laid out the basics of Maestro, I want to talk about which maps Maestro is really, really strong on. And I'm just going to say it out like this. Maestro is strong on every single map. If you know how to play Maestro and apply the, the things that I've given you so far during this video, you can make Maestro viable on any map in this game. Maestro is just one of those operators where if someone brings him, nobody on the team should be mad that you're bringing him, so to speak. He's just super strong, does really, really good with his utility, great gun, just an overall like a total package operator, has impacts barb. I mean, you know, if you bring Maestro and you're, you're upset, you know, you gotta, you gotta understand why someone's bringing Maestro because he's insanely, insanely strong. Now I wanna talk about some mistakes that I see a lot of players make when playing Maestro. So one thing that I always see players make is they're on the wrong cams at the right time. So what I mean by this is let's say right now the round just started and you know, as the cam player, as the maestro player, the intel operator for my team and the, the lineup, you know, I get on cams. Well, a lot of the time, people will just, you know, get on cams immediately, go to default cams, which is completely fine. But always, always make sure that you turn your maestro cams. Because even if you're dead, maestro cams still serve a great purpose during the round, right? So if you die and you didn't turn your maestro cams, that is 100% your fault and your mistake. Fix that, build this habit of always turning your maestro cams because if I place, you know, if I just place this maestro cam, it's going to be looking here. I can't see the default plant. The only thing that I'm going to get out of this is an audio call on the planter. And I don't, I won't know how many people are in where they're at, like specifically in the bomb site. And just, you know, it just makes it a, a much more of a headache for you and your team if you do die before you turn your maestro cams. So make sure, you know, slap the maestro cams down, put your barb down, make the rotates, reinforce whatever you have to do and then bam as soon as all that's done get on your cams turn them whatever you, whatever it is you have to do even if you you know you can still put the maestro cam down and then immediately after turn it because you know you might forget or whatever it is and even i forget with the you know hundreds of hours that i have on maestro i forget sometimes to you know turn my maestro cam so if you guys want to build that habit you know as soon as you place a maestro cam down turn it immediately bam you're good you do that twice after seeing every single placement and you're good to go finish off your prep phase with your utility or whatever it is you need to do right now another mistake that i see a lot of cam players play or not cam players but intel operators do and just people who are playing those intel operators usually you're expected to kind of watch the cams you know give information be in a safe location and just be an overall anchor for the bomb site well a lot of the times people will get on cams like closer to the bomb site so whenever you are, you know, watching cams actively, whether that be default cams or any other intel that your team is bringing, whether that be Valkyrie or a Bulletproof cam or Echo or Maestro, whatever it is, right? You always want to think about working the cameras in the game exterior to interior. So what I mean by that is if I go to the bottom of the list or the far right side of the default cam list, you can see that the default cams that are outside are, at, you know, at the right side. So always go to these cams 
at the beginning of the round so that way you can listen for gun audio you can give information off of how many what operators they have based off gun audio and just the sound of a weapon also where they're spawning and where it looks like their attack is going to initiate because you know if you see five people admin side what does that usually mean it means that it's going to be an admin take or else five of the five you know attackers aren't going to be spawning over there they're not going to spawn admin side and then run over to ceo for a ceo take right because it's just going to eat up more time, which is very inefficient from the attackers. It might happen. I'm not saying that it won't happen, but it usually is a clear indicator of where the attackers are going to initiate their push from. So that way you can, you know, ready your bomb site even more and kind of rotate some utility around if you need to, or rotate player players out of their positions or whatever it is you need to do. Um, but what I, what I want to get across here is working the cams, the default cams, whatever it is you have to your advantage, working these cams exterior to interior so that way you're maximizing your, your information because you know the attackers aren't going to be near the bomb site like this like spiral and you know in baguette area and, and whatever it is right and the first 30 seconds of the round i mean you might you might see like an amaru or something right but uh that's a very specific situation nonetheless work the cams exterior to interior so that way you're maximizing your information so you can feed as much information to you and your team so that way you can prepare and, you know, just adjust your defense around where the attackers are coming from, right? I hope that makes sense. Another mistake that I see sometimes when people are playing Maestro is being on their cams too much. So usually when it comes down to like the last minute of the round or so, you're probably going to have a person or two dead, right? So, you know, utilize those dead people to your advantage because when you're dead in this game, you still have a job to do. Unless there's absolutely no information for you to gather from default camps, if all the camps are destroyed for your defensive side or your team, then, you know, a dead person by that point can still give information from what other teammates are holding or whatever. That's besides the point. Nonetheless, utilize your dead people to your, your advantage. They still should be on default camps. They should still be on maestro camps, whatever intel you have, whatever pieces of information you have. Those dead people should be using and they should be giving information off of that. So, you, you know, as I was saying, once it comes down to like the last minute or so of the round, those people that are dead should be getting under maestro cams. Make sure you're turning them to a angle where, you know, you don't have to worry about it anymore. Maestro isn't really a plant denial operator. He can be, but he, that is not his number one purpose. As I was saying, it's more for utility drones and just giving really, really good information, right? So, you know, do your job still of watching cams and getting on them as Maestro, just giving overall information. But once you get like a person or two dead, make sure you tell them, hey, get on cams, dead person, whatever it is. So that way you're still utilizing them and maximizing your information. I'm I'm trying to get this across and I guess you get you guys can kind of guess this the theme or th the main thing of this video is maximizing your information. I promise if you apply that one thought and that one tip to all of the intel in this game, it will help you out tremendously because information, this is an information game, right? You should be reacting off of information, rotating, taking gunfights off of information. Everything in this game at some point or another stems off of a piece of information. So that way it, it changes on how you react to something or not react to it. Just an overall kind of pool of information will help you out tremendously. So make sure that when you are playing operators like Maestro, that you place his cams in the right positions, at the right angles, make sure you turn them. So that way, again, you can maximize your information, right? All right, and one last little thing I wanna talk about Maestro in specific before I actually kind of give you guys some tips on how to use the Bailiff. Let's talk about when to rotate his cams. So what I mean by rotate is when you should turn them so that way, you know, if the attackers are pushing jungle area, okay, I need to take my Maestro cam from here and make sure it sees here or at least across there so that way I can give information if anyone is in statue or jungle, depending on what you call this area. So a lot of the time, gun audio will always help listening and taking track and, you know, taking positions of, let's say, you know, you, you hear an Ash R4C in this area in the first minute of the round. And then a minute later, you hear on the opposite side of the map. And then you also hear three different gun audios on the other side of the map, right? Take that piece of information and use it and run with it because it will help out tremendously on where the attackers are pushing from initially, where they might rotate their attack and where they are positioned currently. So pay attention to these gun audio cues because it will help out tremendously and how you should position your maestro camp so that way you can maximize your information. I'm sorry for keep saying this, but it, I'm really, really trying to kind of hammer this into your guys' head because I see a lot of mistakes and that is the number one thing uh, when people are playing maestro is not turning their maestro cams before they die or 
uh, turning them before the attackers make their initial push. And, you know, now a dead person can't watch cams, right? So make sure you're paying attention to gun audio and call outs from your teammates. So that way, you, you know, if you have to or need to, you can turn your maestro cam to give inform more information on the area. But with all of that being said, now I want to actually talk about Maestro's Bailiff. So I know a lot of people struggle with the Bailiff, and sometimes I even do myself. I've been say saying for a long time, hashtag buff the Bailiff. It's one of the most neg neglected guns when it comes to changes. And I understand why Ubisoft won't want to balance it or buff it, rather. Uh, because, you know, having like a, a shotgun that can do everything. I mean, we've seen it with the SMG-11 and the SMG-12, where that secondary or even the bearing 9, that secondary becomes the primary by that point. I'm not saying that the bailiff is good for killing, but you definitely don't want to have a secondary shotgun to the point where it's the same as like a mute or smoke shotgun, right? But a few things you can do to kind of make it easier and more efficient for you is the first thing that I'm going to tell you guys is going to apply to any revolver in the game. So whether that be, you know, like the Doc Rook Revolver or the Keratos or the Bailiff, right? If your Bailiff has one bullet still in it, use that bullet to do something that else, something else that you want to do. So whether that be you want to put a kill hole somewhere or a line of sight, use that last bullet. Because no matter if you have four bullets in the Bailiff, if you have one bullet or if you have zero bullets in the Bailiff, the reload time, how long it's going to take to reload for fresh ammo in the gun is going to ex take the exact same amount of time. So you're doing less good for yourself by reloading sooner. And you know, there might be situations where, you know, you don't need to use that last shot in the Bailiff clip for anything and that's fine. But let's say you want to make a rotate and then a line of sight and you still have one Bailiff shot left, right? You know, use that last shot to start the line of sight that you want to make after you made the rotate, right? If that makes sense. And the biggest tip I can give you guys for using the Bailiff so that way it's as, as efficient as possible is first attaching the laser. If you guys don't know, lasers allow the hip fire spread of any gun in the game for it to be smaller so that way it's more accurate. And then while you're making rotates, it, does, it doesn't matter if you're crouched or standing. As you can see, this hole here I made crouch or standing rather, and this one I made crouch. And they're roughly the same size. So it doesn't matter whether you're crouched or standing, they make the exact same size, but make sure you're moving. So if I do this here, I can, I can pretty much make a, a rotate in, in around one clip. Uh, most of the time, I can't do it in one. Uh, I kind of mess up there a little bit, but if I if I test it on the other wall here and get a little bit more distance, uh, you know, I can, I can make a rotate in around one mag with the uh, with the bailiff, and sometimes, you know, you, you might have to melee something like that. Uh, let me find a better wall to, to do this on because I'm kind of messing up here a little bit. Uh, sp spoke too soon, so to speak. Um, but, you know, there you go. Like, that's one clip of the bailiff. To, to make one rotate, right? And I know a lot of people struggle with this, and even walls like this also, you can make a, uh, a rotate like that. Um, that's also another rotate that you can make, and walls like this are a little bit easier to destroy when it comes to rotates. So, you know, make sure uh, you attach the laser and then also uh, are moving while you do the bailiff, so that way you still have the accuracy and the spread while having the laser on, but it also widens a little bit when you uh, start moving, right? So let's just do one more uh, rotate. Let's see if I can do it in four. Um, so there we go. That's a that's a bailiff rotate in four shots. Um, and yeah, you know, it does take time and practice, but those little things can really help because as you can see, as I'm moving, the bailiff spread, or sorry, the bailiff crosshair is expanding when I move, right? And that's just how it is in this game. If, you, if you're moving and shooting, it will be less accurate when you're standing still and shooting, right? So make sure when you are making rotates with the bailiff, uh, make sure that you're moving because uh, standing too close to the wall and not moving will just make it really, really inefficient. So, uh, yeah, those are my two little kind of pointers or tips. Uh, you know, go into a custom game for like 10 minutes, practice it, see how you like it, go into a, a T-hunt so that way you can reload your ammo as well on the reserved ammo, and then uh, test this out, practice it, whatever you need to do. But yeah, that pretty much wraps up everything. If you guys enjoyed or learned something new, make sure you guys leave a like and subscribe to the DG channel. We would really appreciate it over here. And I also want to mention again before I go that you guys should definitely check out the tier system on the actual YouTube channel. You can sub to it for as little as 99 cents a month. You get two awesome wallpapers each month and you also get sub badges as well as emotes. So if you guys want to be dripped out when you leave a comment on the DG channel, consider picking up the uh, subscription tier on the YouTube channel here. And also don't forget to pick up the L85 skin. You can get it by going to the shop, scrolling down, going to the eSports section, and I've already bought it because I'm a cool guy, but you know, it would be in here and I'll just show you guys before I go, actually, what it looks like. So if I go to my sledge, you can see, wow, look at that. That's that's absolutely beautiful. Good job, DG. So if you guys wanna pick up the L85 skin, hey, pop over to the, the shop tab, scroll down, eSports section, Bam, bada bing, bada boom. There you go. Now you can be looking good while you're playing Thatcher or Sledge on the attacking side in Rainbow Six Siege. 
But with all of that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something new. And I will see you guys in the next video.